Welcome back in for the first time in 17 weeks. The Cyclones enter game day as an unranked team after a slow start to open up the season. Opening up with a two and two start, the Cyclones looking for a reset and it's it's always good to get a team that only has one conference win in the past two years come to town for that. So let's get right into some of these highlights here. The Cyclones, they didn't waste any time. Brock Purdy is going to find Xavier Hutchinson makes one guy miss and he's into the end zone. It's seven nothing early for the Cyclones. And then how about the turnover battle? Jayhawks quarterback is going to scramble out here. He's going to look like he's getting a, a first down and he just drops the ball. Cyclones fall on it, get great field position, and then Purdy goes to work again on the play fake. Going to just roll out and he's going to find his big tight end, Charlie Kohler. That gets him to 19 total touchdowns, touchdown catches in his career. And then it's Brock Tober. Purdy is going to go deep here on the play fake. And this is just too easy. Joe skates wide open in the end zone. That makes it 21 to nothing. We're still in the first quarter. Special teams was a big question this week with how much the Cyclones struggled. How about a blocked kick? Greg Iceworth, Iceworth on the return, and he's going to get tripped up right at about the 40 yard line. Great field position. And then Brock, the Brock show goes on Purdy. We'll find Jareel Brock here. Brock's going to slip out into the flat and Purdy just finds him and Brock is into the end zone. It's 28 nothing Cyclones. We're still in the first quarter. Purdy would go on to throw for 245 yards and four touchdowns. He didn't even play the fourth quarter. Then it's going to be Mr. Do it all as we get past the fans here. And it's going to be Mr. Do it all running back Brees Hall. 15 yard touchdown run. It's 35 to nothing. He would go on for over 100 on the night as well. The Cyclones just roll tonight to a 59 to 7 win. Moving on to some FCS action now. Northern Iowa hosted Youngstown State today for homecoming. The Panthers rolled to a 34 to 7 win. Northern Iowa put up 320 yards of total offense with 170 yards coming on the ground in the big win. The Panthers take on FCS power North Dakota State next week. That will be a great game. And then in the battle of the Bulldogs, Drake knocked off Butler today in a low scoring affair. Final score of that one, six to three. The Bulldogs move to two and three on the season. They return home next week to take on the Dayton Flyers. And then wrapping up the final game of our local collegiate teams, the top ranked Grandview Vikings rolled today over Missouri Valley College on the road. Vikings put up 59 points today as the offense was firing on all cylinders. That gets them to move to 6-0, and and that's a number one ranking for Grandview. They're off, they get an off week before hosting William Penn in two weeks. The Hawks got to sit back and watch on this first Saturday in October, and I'm sure they love that. Then last night during the dominating 51 to 14 victory over Maryland last night, the Hawks netted seven total turnovers in the game. They held the Terrapins to just 174 yards passing in the game. Maryland came into the game averaging more than 300 yards passing through the air, and the defense has just looked solid all throughout the year, forcing six interceptions last night as well. But the development of uh, Spencer Petrus has been in full view in the last two weeks. In the game, Petrus accounted for five total touchdowns, three through the air and two on the ground for the junior signal caller. What, you, what might seem as a surprise showing sh what, what might seem as a surprise showing to some folks outside of the program. It's exactly what's expected from the coaching staff and his teammates. Yeah, we, we really like what we've seen. We see, like the development that we've seen from him. Um, and there's a lot of things we see in practice that not everybody else gets to see. So, uh, you know, I think I'd be surprised on our, in our camp about, you know, how he played tonight. And um, the, the you know, first two things I would say about him, he's totally committed, just so committed uh, as a player. I talked about the defensive guys, their preparation. And the other part, I mean, you know, clean game. And we talk about trying to play clean football. It's one of our goals. And, you know, I mean, he's, he's making more decisions than anybody on the field. He's done a great job and improved tremendously from last year. He just looks more comfortable. Um, and during the week, you can just you can just see how dialed he is, dialed in he is, just from staying after practice, watching extra film, making sure he knows his knows what keys to look at in order to get those guys the ball. So he's just a well-rounded guy and a great leader for this team. 
Yeah, big week coming up for Iowa as they host Penn State. We just saw that game end here 24 to nothing win for Penn State. That could be very could very well be a top four matchup with Oregon losing today to Stanford in overtime uh, while Iowa State they get a week off before heading out to Manhattan, Kansas to take on Kansas State and we will be right back. More news next right here on local five.